A short list of big ideas for writing a nonfiction book that changes your life and hopefully changes the world. So let's look really quickly at the outline. This is a tiny course in our Mindful Marketplace uh, product community, but I'm just going to read off some of these in the hope that they inspire you to explore some of this on your own. Number one, your book is a bridge. Your book introduces an idea that invites and inspires an experience. You actually want to both invite an experience, something that you offer in the real world, and obviously you want to inspire your audience to want to have that experience at the end of the book. Your job is to make people think differently about a problem or something that has plagued them or stopped them from actually achieving an end result or objective that they've always hoped to accomplish. Number three, you need a transformation trigger and a turnstile. And this is sort of a more jargony kind of thing, but you essentially want to make sure that people walk out the other side a different person with some sort of rock star result that actually, you know, confers to both you as the author and to your reader as well. So you want to have your own rock star result and you want to offer your audience a rock star result. And it's important to remember that it's not the book that actually does that. The book simply introduces the idea that inspires and invites the end experience. And the experience is what you offer at the end. The turnstile is the experience and the trigger is the idea that offers up a unique insight or epiphany or some unique spin on an old problem that you deliver in the real world. Your experience, the turnstile piece, should have a clear leader, which is you, obviously, a clear deadline, a clear number, and a clear outcome. So this is actually how you can create the end experience, the offer that you're, you know, you, that you're giving at the end of the book in a very, very concise and clear way. Clear deadline, clear leader, clear number, and a clear outline. Number four is tease, don't teach, as a contrast to teaching and don't write. So what you want to do, and this is, again, contingent a little bit on the type of, of tiny book that you're interested in writing. But if you are, let's say, writing a book about meditation, I know lots of folks in our mindfulness-based uh, community are interested in those sorts of topics. You, If you're offering an experience at the end of the book, you want to tease the experience, not teach the entire process in the book, right? So you want people to actually take an action that immerses themselves or immerses themselves more deeply in your real world experiences and expertise in your coaching, in your community, in a course, in a cause, in a cohort, in a, you know, sort of interactive, you know, um, you know, group that you may be leading in the real world. You don't want to sort of teach the whole thing in the book for both practical and for, you know, profit related reasons. People don't actually, people are inspired by words, but transformed by experience. So no one really is going to actually do the thing or a very small percentage of people actually do something that they learned in a book as a matter of practice that transforms their lives. If they do the thing in an interactive you know, kind of guided session, let's say, again, using meditation as the example, in your uh, ecosystem or in your event or in your community or a cohort or one-on-one -on, -one on the phone with you or in a coaching uh, or, you know, course uh, LMS or, 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 or group, like a circle community, people have a much different experience of transformation than they would if you just taught the things in the actual book. You'll notice that, again, using mindfulness as an example, in, let's say, something like transcendental meditation, which is not mindfulness, but it's meditation, that you can't actually 
write a book that explains the process of TM. It's actually against their sort of rules or their, you know, kind of community, uh, you know, bylaws or, or in other words, you can't actually give people the secret of the transformation through a book. It's just part of their whole ethos and approach to teaching. You'll find many books that outline a practice like TM, but it's actually against the rules to reveal the practice itself because of a couple reasons, including that, you know, people get this individualized mantra, et cetera, et cetera. The point I'm simply trying to make is it's well known that people transform by dint of immersing themselves in an actual experience. The book itself is not going to lead to some great transformation in somebody's life. So if you truly want to change the world and you want to change your life and you most importantly want to change your business, the transformation that you offer is this end experience. Okay, so let's move on. We cover this more in our community, but keep it short, right? You 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 want to be very careful to give people this sense of the completion bias and the sense of winning that comes with actually finishing. So, you know, there's a dopamine dump we all get from actually setting out to do something and finishing the goal. And if the goal is reading a book, if you make it 300 pages, two things happen. One, nobody actually takes advantage of that end experience, the thing that you're actually offering your audience at the end. Instead, what they do is they, you know, read the first 20 pages, they skip to the middle chapters, they leaf through the end, no matter how good it may be. I can't think of a book that's been 300 pages long that I've read in the last, you know, five years, 10 years, maybe even. So the key is you want to actually make it short by design so that folks actually feel a sense of winning by dint of having finished the book, as well as actually having their eyeballs introduced to what it is that you want them to do at the end. If that's buried at the very end of a long book, nobody's going to get there. All right. So in the service of keeping this a little shorter, I'm going to race through a couple more of these. And then if you're interested, you can join our community uh, where we're doing writing challenges every month throughout the spring and summer uh, and through the rest of 2024. The next one is on April uh, 19th, I believe, and you can check that out in our community. Uh, But the important question that you want to ask for yourself, which I see people not do in the nonfiction space especially, is where is your win, right? So it's easy to sort of like if you're excited and passionate and have a sense of real purpose for what it is that you're writing about or teaching, it's easy to, you know, kind of discover or unpack the win for your reader. But where's your win? Like, what is it that's going to make your life transform by dint of having written a book about something that you really care about? you know, deeply about, right? If you want to inspire people, it's great to know what they're going to get from having been introduced to your words and your work. But knowing how your life transforms is really important as well. And it's something that many of us neglect to even consider when writing a book, because you ain't going to sell the zillion copies that you think of your book, right? What you're going to do is, you know, you're not going to get rich from writing a book by virtue of the book sales. Very, very few people make the sort of money that those of us who, you know, kind of know a little bit more about the, um, you know, the sort of profit, um, you know, kind of potential of writing books. It's not the book itself that's going to make you rich. It's the million dollar service that you offer at the end, the experience, the turnstile experience, the events, the, you know, the causes, the communities, the cohorts, the coaching, all of that stuff is how you brand your, you know, your book to your author oriented business, right? So knowing what that win is and writing that out in advance is a very, very, 
uh, smart strategy. And without that, you're going to find it less likely that you're going to achieve the objectives that you, you know, aim to accomplish. I'll give you just a pure, you know, illustration of this. The stuff that we're writing, right? The tiny books that we're writing, like what I'm telling you here, the end experience that we offer is a full service uh, book publishing and book branding and author uh, marketing business, right? So that's what we do, a high-end marketing service and book publishing service for authors and entrepreneurs who have big ideas but hate to write. All of the, the books are geared to selling that service authentically, transparently, honestly, much the way I'm um, telling you this here. So you should have the same thing. It's not that selling a whole shit ton of $3 or $8 or $12 books is going to be the big play here from a financial perspective. It's not, right? Finite focus is much better than fierce focus. And essentially what that means is stay very narrow in, you know, a tiny book is does, is designed to be tiny, right? It's designed to be on the low end, 30 pages, on the high end, 70 pages. And it's designed to inspire people to have an experience, right? And you don't want to data dump all of your niche knowledge or industry expertise and just keep on, you know, sort of emoting and sharing and writing and adding and, you know, having this endless outline that never actually uh, helps you get the, the product done or the book done. This applies to courses as well. So you want to have finite focus. You want to build constraints into your book. And the key is think small or start small, but think scale or series. I'd much rather see people in our own business and in our own audience, in our own orbit writ large, write a series of seven tiny books rather than working on one larger book that never actually makes the impact that they hope. Title, type, target, and transformation. The title of the book, the target audience of the book, the type of book it is, let's say whatever the, you know, is it a business book, a mindfulness book, a book for, you know, mindfulness for moms, the more niche and the more granular you can get with respect to this uh, one set of facts is an advantage, right? It's a superpower. Mindfulness for busy mom, a tiny book of big ideas about mindfulness for busy moms is much better than a, a book of mindfulness or a tiny book about mindfulness. It's too wide. Who am I writing for at that point? I don't know. The person looking at the book uh, on Amazon ain't going to know either, right? If it's too generic, if it fits a wide spectrum of potential readers and a wide potential audience, it's a fail. So you want to get very, very granular, finite focus, think small or start small, but think series or scale and scale and series in my, you know, parlance in this case are interchangeable. Um, you know, the, differenti the, the differentiation declaration. So the four T's are followed by, by the differentiation declaration, which I'm finding harder to say today than I expected. So that's simply a unlike other proposition. So title type, target and transformation. And then how does your book differ from other books like it? Unlike other books about mindfulness, dot, 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 this book is exclusively written for busy moms on the go or for overwhelmed dads in a hurry, etc. All right. Very, very simple, very specific. And the more uh, granular and niche that you make your book and you do that by dint of the title, you give yourself, obviously, a easy way of serializing your expertise, right? I mean, it's not so much different to write a tiny book about mindfulness for busy moms than it is for busy dads or busy teens or busy athletes or busy runners or, you know, you get the point, right? So you have this really, you know, kind of 
uh, easy entryway into a number of similar style books that capitalize or leverage on the existing set of facts and set of instructions and even experiences that you're offering at the end of the book. I mean, it's not, again, so much different to create a circle community where you have a group of mindfulness for for busy moms, uh, a cohort, and mindfulness for busy dads, right? I mean, the, the instructions are not all that different, and yet those are very siloed, uh, you know, sort of cohorts. All right, your book is the beginning, right? The old way People, you know, were kind of taught to believe that you wait, that you write this book and then you wait and then, you know, the book is a bestseller and then you're a famous author and all that sort of stuff. And the truth is the new way is simply your book builds this exciting bridge that introduces your real work and your real wisdom in the world. And this is really how you're going, going to trans- transform the world. And your own life, by the way. And you build your brand and your business and your bank account on the basis of each one of these tiny books. And it involves a mindset that says your book is the beginning. And you're going to be excited and stoked and motivated to really just keep creating and keep building and keep hustling, right? And that's a lot of fun when you're doing work that you really truly love and you're impacting the world in a way that makes you feel alive and inspired and empowered and like your life is aligned with your ultimate aims and objectives. So, you know, these ideas that people sort of put out there that, you know, you're going to write a book and your life is going to change immediately just by dint of the book, I wouldn't want it to be like that and it's not. The truth is it's about, you know, hustle and about taking new steps and taking, you know, new uh, challenges and creating new content and repurposing your existing content in new and exciting ways. I mean, look at the people who are the pinnacle of success, again, in something like a mindfulness or spiritual growth uh, kind of book publishing, you know, uh, universe, a guy like Eckhart Tolle, you know, the power of now, right? So he doesn't write that book and then just go, you know, retreat into some, you know, private uh, utopia in which all he's, all, all he's doing is cashing checks and enjoying the fruits of, or the profits of that book. He then goes out and does events and does audio series and does courses and then shows up on Oprah and then does more, you know, tours and this and that. And that's pretty much, and then writes another book, you know, and that's kind of the process, right? So regardless of those of us who will never become Eckhart Tolle, the, the the same principles apply. So you want to actually think of your book as the beginning, as the first step in a new journey that's going to rewrite the future of your own life and your impact on the world writ large. All right. So that's really, really important. And it's a it's a distinction that's significantly different than how many folks teach this kind of, you know, how to write a book that changes your business uh, kind of idea. And I'm going to end with this. Speak like because it it matches what I just said fairly well. It's another uh, there's a bunch of these rules that I'm not going to cover in this audio, but this one I will speak like a sage, hustle like an entrepreneur. And that's sort of dovetails nicely with the previous point, right? You want to be able to be wise, be humble, be um, educational, entertaining, informative, and otherwise, but you also want to be able to hustle in a way that actually, you know, aligns with your own uh, aims and objectives and personality. You, you know, like there's something that's really exciting to me personally and the people that I work with that I can tell they're going to be more successful rather than less. And it's revealed in this, the energy and enthusiasm that emanates from this sense of, you know, hustle. And it's really a powerful 
um, you know, part of this process. You want to be able, if you're writing about things that even are really super, you know, like mindfulness and spiritual growth and self care and mental health, you still have to be willing to hustle a little bit to get your words and your work out into the world. And it's really how you transform lives. And it's really actually a lot of fun. It gives life a deeper sense of meaning and purpose when people are reaching out to you and telling you how much your work has transformed their lives. The last one I'm going to stop with here is the day you kept it real. And it's a rule that we have in our little guidebook here. Play silly games, win silly prizes. Focus only on what's going to move you ahead, right? It's very easy to write a best-selling book in 2024. You just need the right category, the right Amazon algorithm, the right, you know, sort of subcategory, subcategory of another category, and the right little bit of promotion. And all of a sudden, you have for a day or two or five, a best-selling book that makes you $9 and doesn't move the needle an iota when it comes to what matters most. So if your desire is an egocentric, you know, kind of um, urge to actually say you're a best-selling author, which is largely what I see in a lot of these sort of gimmicky, guru-esque sort of spaces, it's easy to do. But it's not a, it's a silly game that's going to give you a silly prize, which is nothing. If you truly want to transform the world with your work and your words and your book and your brand, again, don't don't worry about about artificial, you know, accolades that are I, I kind of misspoke that word, but you don't you don't want to win silly prizes and awards and um, you know things that don't necessarily have any impact in the ultimate objective which you have you know, with respect to your, your entrepreneurial uh, aims. I will never forget, and I'll say this last thing, I worked with a guy a number of years ago, I won't say his name, but he was a psychic medium, I put that in quotes, um, I'm agnostic about psychic mediumship, but he, he actually, he hired me to help him with his, with writing the book, and then uh, and we did a lot of uh, good work together, and he was a nice man, uh, and, and I think he still is. But he ended up submitting his book to all these, like, prize, uh, you know, kind of platforms that, like, gave out, like, you know, awards and prizes. And his book, you know, like, he ended up, like, at the very end saying that he had won all these prizes that he had kind of paid for. I mean, not straight paid for, but pretty close. And... He wanted to include all this in the marketing stuff that we were doing. And I said to him, look, I mean, I'm going to be honest, uh, you know, like these are kind of bullshit sort of awards and they're bullshit prizes. And I think it's actually doing a disservice to include all of this sort of hyperbolic self, you know, congratulation uh, with respect to the awards your book has written, it's only been out for like two weeks. And if you want me to help market this, uh, these are not organizations and associations that I think are reputable to like claim that your book won this award when it was a $500 uh, registration fee that you paid when you submitted it. Anyway, it went badly. Uh, we ended up having a philosophical, uh, you know, break and, he, you know, for the longest time, I would see him on uh, social media. We remained friends for a while. And all of his, his self-referential promotion would be all these accumulated uh, awards that he had won with his now two or three other books. And they were all of the same variety. And I know just by dint of looking at the numbers of his books uh, from, from a sales perspective, they weren't selling well. His business was not really doing all that well. And it just seemed like focusing on these silly prizes, focusing on winning prizes that really were not truly earned and that didn't matter and that weren't really meaningful was became his central focus. And, you know, invariably that doesn't really get any of us where we want to be. Teach what you know, do what you love, wake up the world with your work. I hope this has been somewhat helpful if you're interested in writing a book 
and want to write with us a tiny book, you know, with uh, of whatever ideas that you have in mind that would make you feel excited about uh, building your brand and your business. I hope you would reach out. Mindfulmarketplace at gmail.com is my email address. You can also look in our community. Uh, we have several communities with lots of content for authors. A tiny book about.com is our, uh, our blog for our platform, but we also have course communities, a like Gumroad community, and all sorts of other stuff as well. Thanks so much for listening. If you have questions, as always, feel free to ask. Thanks.